So, you've decided to create an evil ruler in Crusader Kings 3. Let's get started. Slow down, Junior. Rome wasn't built in a day, and true evil is like a fine sauce that takes time to marinate. This video presentation brought to you by Paradox Interactive will serve as a brief crash course in villainy. This weekend only, the strategy is on sale. Buy a strategy for your mom, and your dad, and your grandma, and your grandpa, and everyone you've ever known. Buy them now, just do it, or else. Okay. At the start of any enterprise, it's always a good idea to take account of your expectations, and decide those big why questions. Why do you want to be evil? Did your father never hug you? Will it help you get back at that pesky brother-in-law that won over the heart of your sister? Are you just looking for a new hobby? After you've answered with something that satisfies you, it's on to step two. Life is existential torture, and it's important to decide upon a goal or you might never be happy, even if you have all the money, power, and fame that any reasonable troglodyte could ever desire. When will you be happy with your degenerate crusade of indignity? Do you want to cut off everyone's head? Or perhaps you have an arch nemesis you're trying to get back at. It's important at this phase to practice positive visualization. Imagine yourself seizing the opportunity and standing triumphantly over your goal. Mindset is malleable. And there's a little saying we like to tell newcomers in the business. It's called evil. E-V-I-L. It's a mnemonic, and it helps you remember every Voldemort is livid. Evil. E-V-I-L. So if you ever lose sight of your goal along the way, just remember to evil, and you'll be right back on course in no time. Wowzers, you've made it all the way here. Congratulations. It's time to design ourselves. Ask yourself, what will I look like? Will you be a suspicious looking demon baby? A creepy old man? Remember, you can't make any changes later, so be sure to pick something that suits your nefarious story. I recommend selecting facial features that will look imposing and intimidating and signal to potential rivals, look out world, this guy really means business. Once you're finished, be sure to pick a name that won't arouse much suspicion. Names like Dimitri or Vladimir may sound intimidating, but they might give away your nefarious intents to anyone you might potentially decide to plot against in the future. Here, we pick something unimposing, like Sally. As soon as you're born, waste no time and hit the ground running. You're a literal baby. Little does anyone else know that you are a sinister infant. Is that secret a part of your plan? Or will you make it a point to outwardly demonstrate your ill will toward all of humanity through deliberate displays of wickedness? Let's get started with Sally. We'll take a quiet approach and simply raise our level of scheme until we turn four, at which point we'll attack befriend our first friend, of course. The time has come to carry out your nefarious intentions. How should you begin your violent crusade of darkness? The pieces are in play and it's time to start making moves. As in all things in Crusader Kings, evil begins on your wedding day. To whom will you be betrothed? The answer is... That's right, literally anyone. Right now you're an obvious target. The fate of Southern Ireland is in jeopardy because right now you can't wipe yourself. We find ourselves arranging a marriage, God only knows how, to a far older woman for almost 20 years in the future. Don't worry, don't call the police. This is standard fare in Crusader Kings. Ah, youth, growth, and how you grow like a weed. So many years of learning and educating yourself, your nose grows larger every year until your 16th birthday the peak age of intelligence, maturity, and physical athletic performance. We begin by declaring war on this baby. I don't really know why. My ally told me to do it, my hands were tied. Get this baby out of here. Get this baby out of here. The war is successful and the baby is ousted from power. Goodbye, baby. Oh. With babies out of power, we can finally focus on our plans. No more distractions. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Remember, you're a bad apple. 
Your Sally. The age of so-called ultraviolence starts now with a visit to County Mayo, not mayonnaise, literally mayo. I know it's confusing, but listen. Count Ruadri has been a thorn in our side for tens of years. He is the lowest form of troglodyte to ever walk the earth ever. And he and all of his family deserve death. Dessert. Lots of it. Fortunately, we possess a cornucopia of both of these vital resources. Spiders and poison. The serpent strikes at midnight. Hiss. Hiss. We have waited for the time, and the time is now. With a lick and a rub, we plot and plot and plumb the seamy underbelly of the Irish lordship. At this stage, we arrange the murder of not only Count Ruadri, but also his son, and his other son, and his daughter, and his other daughter, and his other son. Whenever we're discovered, we just keep doing what we're doing because who are they going to call? The FBI? Don't be ridiculous. This is a Sally special. We rely on our accomplices, the men that the Count schemed against in order to get people to join in on our unpopular plot. And whenever people don't want to join, we just bribe them with $50 until they'll join us. Surprisingly, $50 goes a long way. I bribed almost everyone in Ireland with $50. They couldn't refuse. It doesn't ever help that I happen to be the most suspicious looking person alive. It's even more predictable than an episode of Scooby-Doo. Remember, it's always the person who tells the story that happens to be the villain. However, even though we're discovered by the very people we're plotting against, three out of seven times I counted, we still managed to thin them all out. My favorite story was when one of the family members choked on a chicken bone and then blamed me for it in his dying breaths. I, I wasn't actually part of that one, but I suffered some indignities there. It's tough being the greatest. A wise man once said, We're climbing in your windows, and we're snatching your people up. But how do you know when it's time to stop? Change the music. This is too joyful. That's better. Icarus flew too close to the sun. And you know how that story ended. The rest of this story is tragedy. You've seen my rise. The most glorious peak moment of my dynasty. Looking past my scheme and intrigue list, I noticed all nine of my children bore the same countenance as me. It's something in the nose I can't quite place about them, so I renamed my dynasty the House of Squidward. Back to the tragedy. To have come so far and accomplished all of your dreams, not just dreams anymore, to live them as a reality and yet feel so much stress, so much emptiness, such meaninglessness. This is what it means to be a breadwinner. Now I know how my father felt, and his father before him, and his father before him. And now we're getting to the thesis of this video, and this is what I insist is the essence of Crusader Kings 3, to experience the glory and the tragedy of what it means to be human the passing down of generations, and the immediate myopia to the efforts of all previous generations. Are we damned to be left as shades repeating the same mistakes of our fathers over and over ad infinitum? This is where I start to get really down. So after all of that thinking and deliberating, I decided to give it all up and renounce the evil life. I did what any other reformed villainous tyrant would do, and I kept taking up and then subsequently renouncing vows of poverty until it drove me insane and made me into a literal vegetable. One day I would sell all of my possessions and give them to the poor. The next day I was back at it, taking pleasure in grotesque excess and buying myself lavish presents. Ultimately, this ended in a great spectacle, and I completely lost my mind. It's my absolute favorite mechanic in Crusader Kings 3. If you just keep taking and renouncing vows of poverty, you spontaneously die of stress. On the 28th of April, 1095, King Sally, nothing to see here, died at the young age of 28. Though they still say that there are many like him out there today, roaming in the world, 
Can we learn anything from this? Yes, maybe King Sally didn't remember too evil enough. So just remember too evil, and everything will be fine. As always, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A major thanks to my patrons as well as Paradox, both of whom make this video and all of my videos possible. I can't thank you enough. Until we meet again.